Hello and welcome all. Today we are going to start a new chapter on account confirmation and password recovery in ASP.NET Core. And this is the part one. It will be divided into several parts just for the sake of learning and you know not to overload with the information in just a single tutorial. So this is the learning outcome. We will learn how to build and test an ASP.NET Core app with authentication. Configure an email provider which is a SendGrid. I will talk about the SendGrid, how to configure um, your email with the username and password and get an API key um, in another lecture. So please watch on for that. And we will configure the SendGrid user secrets and install SendGrid. Okay, so let's get back to the business. Now, in this tutorial, we shall learn how to build and test an ASP.NET Core web app with authentication. And to be honest, this tutorial is not a beginner's topic. And you should be familiar with the ASP.NET Core in general, Authentication Entity Framework Core. And by the way, for all my subscribers and the viewers who have been looking into my tutorials on this channel, and um, these topics have been covered in this YouTube channel in playlists. At, and if you subscribe to the channel, you can see all the playlists Otherwise, you can look for these two playlists in um, particular ASP.NET Core Tutorials and ASP.NET Core with Entity Framework Core using Visual Studio 2017. So I will again um, put this link in the video description in the YouTube. And if you like my series of tutorials, please don't forget to put your comments and valuable feedback and subscribe to the video, subscribe to the channel by giving your thumbs up to the subscribe button on the right hand bottom corner of the YouTube. Okay, so the prerequisites is .NET Core 2.2 SDK or later. And if you have any version prior to Visual Studio 2019 like Visual Studio 2017 and .NET Core 2.2 SDK, then follow the documentation here. Now I'll also put a link on the video description for this is the relevant version if you had got a uh, old version that is 2017 and with .NET Core 2.2 SDK installed. So you can follow this tutorial. And um, But if you have installed Visual Studio 2019 preview version, then you have to use the documentation at this, which is what I have used you know, for documenting this tu tutorial. So I will put this link as well in the video description. So I will go with the above link for Core 3.0. This is also in the video description. So it is highly recommended to keep the Microsoft documentation open while you build this app, right? Like I cannot emphasize um, enough about the requirement for all of the subscribers or viewers who are seriously wishing to learn ASP.NET Core to keep the Microsoft documentation. If you have got two screens, you can keep the Microsoft documentation open in another screen or otherwise after watching my uh, video, you can look into the Microsoft documentation for all the code snippets that I have actually used and all the other advices, right? So the first part of this tutorial is create a, and test a web app with authentication. And for that, we'll have to run these commands. You know, these commands are also in the Microsoft documentation. So just hang on and I will get back to the Visual Studio first. So getting back to this slide, as you can see that, you know, I'll have to run the following commands to create a web app with authentication on a command prompt. So what I do is I'll have to bring 
the command prompt by typing cmd on the search bar so here is the command prompt and i have got this i'll change the directory to g drive because i will be using g as a data drive so i have shifted from c to the g directory um, or g drive you can say so and this is my um, folder where i wish to create restore this uh, video so change directory cd all right so the directory and drive drive and directory is changed to g youtube channel project for videos and then i'll have to uh, give this command so let me write it while you are you can also follow me rather than copying and pasting it so dot net new web app minus au and for the meaning of this uh, switch minus au or this minus uld and o you need to look into the help file for this project okay so that we can take up in some other video but right now just follow me individual minus uld minus o and microsoft has named this project as web pw recover password recover so i'll go by that name only okay so new web app and then this will create the project for you automatically restore the project so it says the template asp.net core web app was created successfully restore succeeded okay um, now the next command is cd change directory to the newly created directory for this project web pw recover and then finally the dot net run command that runs the um, this project okay dot net run and i have talked about this um, these commands some of these commands at least in one of my videos to create a asp.net core web app using command line interface cli in my one of my playlists so please subscribe to the channel to get the best use of these courses takes a wee bit okay so you can see that it's already started running so now listening on this port https port localhost 5001 and http is localhost port number 5000 and you can control you can click control c to shut down okay so now if i browse to this location you know https localhost colon 5001 which is the port name you can see that the project is running so just hang on so you can see as i browse to https localhost 5001 if you look into this then https localhost 5001 um it gets to this your connection is not private but i click on i ignore this and click on advanced and pro proceed to localhost run uh, unsafe okay don't worry about it the server um, because this is absolutely uh, trustworthy certificate issued by microsoft so proceed to localhost okay so i got this screen so this is absolutely running and then let's get back to what the next step is 
So this I have brought the slideshow again. Now the next step is run the app which I have run. Select the register link and register a user. Okay. So let's go back to the code uh, well, register. Sorry. Let's get back to I've got back to the browser. So click on register. And let's see. I can register any email. Let's uh, I can make it krc at krc.com. Krc is my initial. This is not a real email, but you know, just uh, it will. Uh, let's make a real email, right? Because it will ask me to validate that email. So it will not work. So go for a real email. So one of my real email is and I will create a password. Should register me if everything is all right. So this is already taken. Okay, uh, let me try another one. If this is also taken, then I will tell you what to do to delete the records. Right. So it says register confirmation. This app doesn't currently have a real email sender registered. Okay. So click here to confirm your account. Right. So if you look into the uh, slideshow, that will also show the same thing. It shows we are redirected to the identity account register confirmation page. It contains a link to simulate the email confirmation. Click, select, click here to confirm your account link. Okay. So I'll click on this link. Confirm email. Now I'll, now let me log in with the credentials that I used to register. Okay. So I put my email and the password. And let me log in. Right, so I have been logged in. Now, what is the next step? The, let's see the next step, what it says. Uh, now, this select the hello, your email at provided dot link. Yes. And let's get there. And it says that which redirects you to the identity account manager, uh, account manage personal data page. Okay, identity account manage. This is the personal data page. And select the personal data tab on the left and then select delete. Delete. And then delete. So deleting this data will permanently remove your account and this cannot be recovered. But this is only a test. So I will like to delete my account. All right. So give the same password I use for registering. Now the next step is to uh, go to this um, where the project was restored from the console command in the first uh, step. And I have browsed to that directory g youtube channel project for videos and this is the web password recover project that was created okay so let's click on this and we see that there is a project fold project file created so i will right click that project file and then open it with visual studio 2019 preview
and I can tell you that this Visual Studio Preview version comes with the latest version of ASP.NET Core um, 3.7 preview automatically um, synchronized within this. And uh, so if you don't have ASP.NET Core 3.0 SDK, it is automatically going to be there if you have downloaded and installed the preview version of 2019. So just look into help and you can see that this is the preview version. So Visual Studio 2019, Community 2019 preview. Okay, it's freely available on the net. Just link, that's just Google for Visual Studio 2019. Uh, as I just told you that I'll have to create a folder name service and a class named auth message sender options in that folder. Okay, so let's do that. So let's flip, flip over to the Visual Studio and we'll create a folder name services. So now I'm going to create a services directory. So add new folder services and within this services class I will add a within this services uh, folder or um, directory I will add a class and name this class auth message sender options Okay. And what this class is supposed to have? So this public class auth message sender options should have two public properties of um, two string public properties, um, send grid user and send grid key. So we'll come back to that when we configure send grid and as to what they really do. Send grid user. Get set. And then other one is send grid key. Key for that user. Right. So services class is prepared and I've got this um, services um, directory is So now I have created this services directory and within this services directory I have created a auth message sender options with these two public properties send grid user and send grid key which are both uh, string right now I will tell you how to configure the send grid so I have got my account already created okay so I have got my uh, so it is welcoming me welcome Kaushik to get up and running quickly please follow the steps outlined below so out of this because I have already tested this um, I will use out of these three um, options, um, I will use this one, integrate using our web API or SMT relay, SMTP relay. So I will click on start and I will choose this one, web API. And uh, it is asking me to log in. Details are already there.
Right, so I will choose this recommended one, Web API. And I will choose C Sharp, choose the language you, you want to use. Right, so make sure you have the prerequisites. So I've got .NET version 4.52, upwards of 4.52. So I will create an API key. And first of all, I'll show you how, um, how to create the API key. It is just simple, as simple as to give it a name and create the API key. So let us give it a name, my Kaushik API of course you can give any API key name that you choose just record it sorry and create the key so my create uh, key is already added you know this is the you can say this is the user actually uh, Kaushik API key and this is the actually the value of this API key right and then the more important thing is to do uh, uh, step by step so you have to obey all these prerequisites I have done these two I have to create an environment variable next to update the development environment with my API key and the value okay so it is giving you a thread to review, but you can, but I have found that, you know, just uh, looking. So in order to create this environment variable, I just clicked on the system icon, all control panel items, and then click on this, or you can just uh, write control panel on your search bar. And once the control panel is loaded with all the icons, click on the system and maximize this and click on the advanced system settings right environment variables and i can add uh, i already have a environment variable krc send grid api key but i will let me create a new one to show you so new one and what is the variable name and value that i will get from the uh, send grid so getting back to the send grid let us uh, browse where it was um, so it's on the another tab on the same browser instance so this is send grid this is the api key kaushik api key so i'll copy it from there and then paste it in this variable name paste it and then the value for the value again I will have to browse to the relevant thing now this is the value of that API key API key name is this one and value is this okay so where were we so this is the value variable value variable name and variable value and click on OK so you can see that it is already there, Kaushik API key, right? So just click on OK, click on OK, it's already there. So keep it open. Now I can, I have to install this package, SendGrid, which was um, in the next, in the agenda, if you look into the slideshow again. So that was install package send grid okay so let's follow uh, this as uh, send grid has told so i'll have to install this package on this project so how do i do that 
right click manage new get package right so i can see under the installed package there is no send grid so i can browse i can do it from either the package manager console or i can install it from here so okay you can send grid you can look for send grid send grid it's there it's coming send grid so this has got yeah this is the one you can see that there are so many installations 7.99 million million downloads so you can install it either through nuget package manager or package manager console right you can let me install it from nuget package manager it's installing nuget package the latest one so now let me uh, put this uh, code over here um send grid user and send grid key with secret manager tool so uh, it's not there uh, so i have now put this code dot net user secret set send grid user kaushik api key successfully saved send grid user kaushik api key to the secret store and also i put this command automatically it takes two lines one by one and executes the first line and then goes to write the second line and execute it so dot net user secret set send grid key so that was the key value so successfully set saved send grid key also send grid user and send grid key are both successfully saved now where is the user secret store where is, where is this saved actually as you can see on this slide that it is showed on your uh, hard disk on your explorer file explorer at app data microsoft user secrets web app name user secrets id directory okay so i have browsed to that directory on my machine and this is the this one aspinet web password recover and this is the automatically given id you don't have to bother so when you are just executing that um command it automatically creates this folder within the app data roaming and microsoft user secrets and then could have a look at this secret.json file edit with notepad and you'll find that this is already there send grid user is there and send grid key is also already filled so it's already stored in a secret location right okay. before leaving um, in the first part in this tutorial today we have learned how to build and test an asp.net core app with authentication by writing the script and running it on the on a console command and we have known how to configure an email provider we have used sendgrid for that purpose and we have also known how to install the sendgrid and then configuring the sendgrid user secrets and where to find those secrets in the secret store 